there, my name's Paul and this is Out of Neutral, a weekly vlog where we look to the Bible to get in gear and follow Jesus into the life he came to make possible. Now today I want to talk about why others in the church don't care the way you do. Have you ever wondered why others in the church don't care the way you do? Have you at least noticed that they don't? If you haven't felt this yet, before long, you probably will. When I first felt this, I didn't ask the why question, I just assumed it. I assumed that other people didn't care the way I did because they just didn't care. I assumed that it must be a deficiency in their faith or their passion or something. What I was experiencing, I believe, was real. But my assumptions about it were all wrong. Let me explain. Let me explain why other Christians don't care the way that you do. Now, the short answer to why they don't, uh, they don't care the way you do is because of spiritual gifts. What Paul reveals about them in 1 Corinthians 12 is critical to understanding why other Christians may not seem as excited about certain things as you are. He starts in verse 1 with an appeal for understanding, saying, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Spiritual gifts are simple, simply special helps that God gives to his people to accomplish his will. God's plan is that we would carry on the work that Jesus began to do on earth. To do that, he gives us passion, ability, and opportunities to be a part of that work. The only problem is that we're all given different spiritual gifts. He explains the diversity of God's plan for our service in verses 4 to 7. He says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Did you hear his emphasis? Varieties of gifts, varieties of service, varieties of activities, but the same Spirit, same Lord, and same God. Why would he need to spell that out so emphatically? I think it's because people's natural inclination is to assume the differences are just mistakes. If I feel that what people most need is to be better cared for, I might get frustrated with someone who's always talking about spiritual growth or evangelism or giving. This passage reminds me that it's the same God who has made each one of us uniquely. One person's passion for teaching comes from the same Spirit who gives another special ability in serving or showing mercy. Even people with the same spiritual gift, they may use that gift in different ways. And that's the point of mentioning the varieties of service and activities. One person's gift of mercy might compel them to visit the hospital while another starts a food bank. The Holy Spirit gifts each of us uniquely, and so Christians have been rightly described as spiritual snowflakes. And we need to remember that. Now, the unique way that the Holy Spirit has gifted a believer will give that person passion and interest in particular areas. I didn't realize that as a new Christian. I just knew that I had a heightened awareness in areas of teaching and leadership. It felt like a spider sense that I didn't have before. Because I was ignorant about spiritual gifts, I didn't realize that God was trying to get my attention in areas that he wanted me to serve. As Paul says in verse 7, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Before I used to think, why isn't anybody doing anything about that? Now I think, oh, God must be stirring me up to do something about that. An understanding of spiritual gifts has helped me to understand why I feel so strongly about certain things. Instead of feeling misunderstood, now I feel motivated to act. Spiritual gifts are behind Paul's most famous metaphor of the church. The church is the body of Christ, and each of us is a part of it. In verse 12, it says, For just as the body is, is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Now, when we talk about Jesus' hands and feet in this world, it's more literal than we often think. Each of us is uniquely gifted by God's Spirit to serve a role in the body so that together we might finish what Jesus started. 
what has God given you a spiritual passion for? What has God equipped you to do? What part of the body might you be? Ask these questions as you seek to be and to do all that God has created you for. Now, that's all for this time. If today's video has helped you get out of neutral, share it with your friends and subscribe to join us on the journey.